So, uh, good evening. Has any one of you heard about the shortage of doctors in the uh, state of Brandenburg? Um, the situation is actually quite serious because there's a lot of rural areas and the country doctors are getting quite old and gradually retiring and it's very difficult to attract new, just graduated, fresh country doctors to the region. And as a result, it can get very challenging to access healthcare. You might need to drive a very long way to consult um, a doctor. And yeah, as the um, population is aging, it becomes very problematic to access healthcare. And this problem is not unique to Brandenburg, but basically in any rural area, there's a challenge to drive to a doctor when you have, on the other hand, medical emergency, or it's something not so serious, so you can't be bothered to drive 50 kilometers to a doctor. Um, there is a technological solution to this problem. Um, it's called telemedicine. And telemedicine means that you consult a doctor at distance. So for example, there is a video connection and you tell your concern and then you get treatment that way. And we were really puzzled in our project, why isn't this technology used, for example, in Brandenburg or in Germany that often? And the reason for this was actually legal because long distance treatment until last year was prohibited in Germany, so you couldn't do it. And it seems quite counterintuitive, so we tried to look a bit into the background of this regulation. Why is it there? It doesn't seem to make sense. And we did find something. Um, we found out that actually the history of this prohibition starts with Lifestyle magazine in 1850s. And um, at the time, the educated emerging bourgeois class was very interested in health advice, so they were reading magazines which featured questions and answers from doctors, and they could send letters to these doctors. And actually it was a very popular practice, so doctors were advertising treatment by mail correspondence treatment um, uh, services, and uh, yeah, so it uh, was a widespread phenomenon. And of course, it kind of raises a question whether a letter can actually transmit so much information. So you tell, you have a headache, you send it, the letter to a doctor, um, how informed is he or she actually about what's going on with you? And uh, the General Assembly of Doctors at the time were not really fond of this practice, so they decided to distance self. It wasn't kind of favorable for their profession. It wasn't very favorable for the um, uh, patients either. And gradually this like, hesitance towards long distance treatment was codified in the law. So in uh, 1897, Saxony prohibited long distance treatment by letters. And uh, gradually this became a kind of more accepted feature of healthcare and a more uh, level of whole Germany in Weimar Republic, the long distance treatment was prohibited in 1927. But this law specifically prohibited the treatment of sexually transmitted diseases with letters. And they're contagious, so it, it does make sense. And you can observe that with this law of, uh, of the 20s, there was a public health interest behind it because there was an epidemic at the time. So um, from Germany, you can really see that, okay, there's a reasonable grounds to prohibit long distance treatment when you use technology such as letters. And this kind of stayed with the legislation. So gradually all states prohibited long distance treatment and it stayed this way until now. Um, by contrast, in the US, the history of prohibiting long distance treatment is much younger than in Germany. It's almost 100 years younger. And it started with problems caused by the internet because once it became more popular medium, it became very easy to um, write to a doctor that you have very bad pain and get a prescription so for a medicine which can be used as a narcotic. 
So there was a problem of misuse of um, control substances that are addictive and overdoses death. And in 2008, then the government of, uh, of the US uh, decided that, okay, it's time to intervene with this and prohibited um, long distance prescriptions to control substances. So you uh, needed actually to have a relationship with the doctor, they needed to know you, and uh, you had to have a physical examination before you got these drugs with a, a prescription to them. And it all seems to make sense. It, it appears proportionate. There's public health interests. You protect the patients. You protect also misuse of, um, of doctors of their position. Um, but in the US, you may also observe um, legislation on telemedicine which is not directly influenced by the health interest. So in the last years, there have been prohibitions specifically of telemedical um, medical abortions. So medical abortions means that you take a pill to carry out the procedure. And I didn't know it, but actually there's no difference in safety whether it's carried out by telemedicine or in person. So this legislation, one can say that it's not motivated by health interest, but there's a political reason with it. And this year we have heard of other attempts to ban abortion, so it belongs to that discourse, which I will not discuss further here. But just to highlight that there can be other motivations to regulate telemedicine than just healthcare. Of course, uh, telemedicine can't solve all healthcare problems. So if you have a wound that requires stitches, you can't really use a Band-Aid on it. And also with telemedicine, it's not fitting for all circumstances, but it's still as a palette of healthcare services that we have, it has benefit for rural populations, it has benefit for those who have limited mobility, just an example. And the regulation of it should be based, on the other hand, by the actually evidence-based standards, what's good healthcare, and on the other hand, uh, what are the limitations of technology uh, at use and opportunities. And I mean, in Germany, it does make sense that we enact legislation which targets letters and doesn't really address the opportunities of video technology. And indeed, last year, the, uh, chamber, uh, the federal medical chamber relaxed the rule on the prohibition of long distance treatment, and it allowed it in, in special cases. This rule needs to be implemented on the, federal, uh, on the level of the states, and 13 states allowed telemedicine, one allowed it with uh, reservation, and two re decided to maintain the prohibition. And Brandenburg was actually one of them, the state with, one of the states with most rural population and shortest of doctors. It doesn't really make sense, but at least the patients in Brandenburg can consult now uh, physicians from other states. So part of the legal obstacles have been removed. Thank you.